Hey my guys, today we're going to go and visit a true icon of the Australian dance music scene, Club 77. Spanning a 20 year history of insane parties and music, Club 77 has proven a crucial breeding ground. And we're going to go and speak to some of the people who have made it what it is. How has Club 77 contributed to Sydney's nightlife? 77 was one of the first clubs I ever went to. When I talk about you know, a, a club and uh, being a formative time of your life, people would come here and they would discover their friends, they'd discover their, this is a place where I've met people where I can discover myself and I can feel safe. You know, there's other weirdos around. You know, this has always been the place for it. You weren't judged on uh, any sort of aesthetic part of your being. You were just judged on the, the quality of the person you were. I think what makes it so special is the fact that I know I'm gonna get to be intimate with the punters and have that really close connection and actually see their reactions. And that's essentially what I look for when it comes to like a good club. Definitely it gives me more inspiration within the studio side of things and it allows me to keep an open mind in experimenting within the studio as well. I think what Club 77 has that other clubs doesn't have is history. It's been around a long time. Um, I first came here in it was either late 98 or early 99. I came here for a party called Tweaking, which Phil Smart and Sugar Ray used to put on. And these sort of venues just really aren't around anymore. Is there anything else in Sydney that you feel is missing that could also help that nightlife culture really flourish again? Honestly, I think Sydney's missing venues like this. I mean, when I say that I had formative experiences in nightclubs, there were formative experiences in places like this. You know, underground nightclubs and, and places that you can't see the daylight. When it comes around to daylight time, I think definitely missing in Sydney. When you have that culture happening again and you have that these venues happening again and, and open, there's going to be people making those bad decisions, which is what we need. You yeah. need people to make a bad decision. Take a risk, take a <laughs> gamble, take a risk. Yeah, yeah. Very much risk adverse now. Is there anything Club 77 is doing to foster the next generation of dance electronic producers, promoters? We started connecting with a lot of younger you know, promoters and DJs and producers. And we're just encouraging them to come down here, hang out, play on a big system, play in a nightclub, you know, just sort of learn about, you know, what's going on in the industry from them as well, because those guys are also a wealth of information about what's happening within their scenes and their crowds. It's also a way of us being able to give back to these people, you know, and, and just sort of build those relationships. And if Club 77 Legacy could be that, it's the first point of contact for people to come and experience club culture, then that would be amazing. Now that um, parties and clubs are going to be reopening, I'll be able to get more inspiration and have those nights filled with dancing so I can make the dance music. Because without the dancing, you kind of forget like what works and what doesn't work in the clubs. I'm excited to get that inspiration back.